Good evening, creeps. Tonight, your mystery playhouse presents Miss Leslie Woods in An Inner Sanctum Mystery. The title, A Ghost in the Garden. Now we're at your door, Mr. Host, so open it, won't you? Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. This is your host, inviting you in through the squeaking door. Come on in. Come in, join our happy little community. And if you're not very careful, maybe you can stay. (laughs) It's happened to some of our nicest people, and believe me, they've never regretted it. As they always say, it's a place to rest your bones. Remember, ours is the only community that has no taxes, no housing problems, no inflation, and no politicians. Of course, it might seem a little dead to you, but uh, that's the idea, isn't it? (laughs) Suppose we get down to brass tacks. And I do mean the ones that go around the edge of a coffin. Huh? Well, don't sneer. I've heard better jokes myself. But remember, he who laughs last, laughs best. And brother, when we in the inner sanctum laugh, we're laughing last. Meet Laura, a nice girl in her 30s who had an uncle and worried about it. It was a pleasant life at Green Tower. It was pleasant being mistress of the huge time-worn house and the fertile acres that surrounded it. And the money that came in regularly. Always. It was pleasant being married to Tony, who was very handsome and very gay, and who, they said, had married me for my money. Well, perhaps he had, but he was fond of me anyway. I'm sure he was, even though he was younger than I. But only a very little younger. It was a pleasant life. Until Uncle Edward came home. Tony had gone out to the village, I think, to pick up something or other. I was alone. Tony, the door is open, darling. You know I never lock it. Did you have a nice time buying things, Tony? And who, my dear oh. daughter? It's Tony. Oh, Uncle Edward. Yes. But I haven't returned from the grave, my sweet. I didn't think you had. Hello, Uncle. That welcome could very easily be warmer and still not be overwhelming. I've been away a long time. And for a change, Green Tower seems attractive. Does it? Which is rather a pity. What do you mean? Selling it. You're not going to sell Green Tower? Oh, yes. Yes, I need the money. Uncle, you can't sell Green Tower. <laughs> well, it's mine. Of course I can sell but... it. But... And uh, who is this Tony? Tony is my husband. Oh, really? Well, my congratulations. And I take it he thinks you own Green Towers? Yes. And thinks you have money as well? Yes. (laughs) Uncle, I... I thought I saw someone in the garden. Uncle, please. Be still. It's so infernally dark out there, I can't see. Might be some burglar fellow. He was standing with his back to the room, peering out into the garden. Uncle Edward, who had been away a long time and who had come back at last to shatter my life. He was not a very big man, my uncle. And when I came close to him, I realized that he was barely as tall as I. Uncle. I can't make out a thing. Blasted shadows. He was looking out into the garden for an imaginary burglar while I stood behind him with the old French paper knife my mother had left me. I tried again. Uncle, please. Now, it's no use, my dear. No use. Go away and stop bothering me. He didn't even turn around when he said that to me, which made it quite easy when I... The knife went in smoothly. It kept on going into his back until I thought it would never stop. But the handle balked. 
Uncle Edward's body stiffened for a moment and leaned back intolerably against the knife. Oh. He groaned. Oh. And he fell. <coughs> After a moment, I bent over him. He was very silent. As silent as the dark garden. As silent as death. My uncle had come home more than he knew. He wasn't very heavy. And he didn't bleed at all, which was nice. As I dragged him through the French doors into the softness and darkness of the garden. I hurried, because Tony would be coming home. The ground would be softest, I knew, under the rosebuds that I loved so. It was there that I dug a grave for Uncle. And it was there that I buried him. Under the lovely roses that would bloom again and again. Not knowing or caring who lay beneath them. There was the sound of our car pulling up at the front door, but I was finished. Uncle was under the roses with a paper knife still in his back. And I, I was in the drawing room at the piano when my darling came in. Oh, my love. Oh. Oh, Tony, my dear. Mm. Mm. Anything exciting happened while I was away? No, Tony. No. Nothing ever happens here. Nothing. Pleasant having breakfast in the garden, isn't it, Tony? Mm-hmm. Except for, um, look. Hmm? Oh, dear. Just so. Mm-hmm. All went bad. Hmm. Well, he's a very nice old gentleman, but he does talk a lot, and... Ah, oh, good morning, good morning, oh. good morning! My, what a lovely sight you two make. Charming! Thank you, Mr. Stokes. Well, Laura, your roses are almost as lovely as you are. Ah, uh -huh, they're much lovelier, you know that. Uh -huh. And where is your Uncle Edward this fine morning? My Uncle Edward. Oh, Laura, you upset your coffee. Oh, yes, I did, didn't I? That was very careless of me. I, uh, well, Mr. Stokes, I, I suppose Uncle Edward is still abroad. Oh, my dear, my, my dear, I saw him last night here. Yes? Well, uh, uh, on his way here, at any rate. I was driving. It was quite late. I saw him coming down the road. Oh, it was wasn't so... Uncle Edward. No? No, well, isn't that funny? Well, uh, I thought I could have recognized him anywhere. It wasn't Uncle Edward. Well, yes, of course. You know better than I, of course. Well, I must be getting old, eh? Well, uh, that reminds me. Mrs. Stokes will have my head if I don't hurry back home. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Who's uh, Uncle Edward, Laura? Uh, my, my, my uncle. Well, I could have guessed that. Oh, yes, of course. I, I mean, my, 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 my mother's brother. A poor relative? Um, why do you ask that? Well, you seem so upset when Stokes mentioned his name. Oh, well, uh, he is a bit. He, uh, he, he sponges. No, I wouldn't have liked him. No, no, I, I, I don't think you would. So, isn't it lucky it wasn't Uncle Edward? <laughs> Um, that you, Tony? Yeah, I'm going down the road to the Carter. You want to come along? No, dear. I better go through this mail. Ah, good old mail. Lots of checks coming in, huh? <laughs> Lots of them, darling. <laughs> Say, Laura. Yes? Well, why aren't you using your paper knife? My pa... Oh, oh, it, it, uh, it needed cleaning, and I, I sent it away to have it cleaned. Oh, well, it was a pretty thing. Yeah. Glad you haven't lost it. But I, I thought I noticed it around last night. No, no, I sent it away a few days ago, uh, when, when I went into town. Uh-huh. Well, I'll see you later. Bye. Bye, um, until later. And please, Tony, please forget about my paper knife. Please, Tony, forget about it. <laughs> Not at all. Very nice. Very nice. We like it. Yes, you do. 
Now, where's Ed Cheney? Ed Cheney? You can tell him his old pair of trail is here and waiting. Oh, well, I'm, I'm afraid you've made a mistake. What kind of mistake? There's no Mr. Cheney here. Look here, my girl. This is Green Towers, isn't yes. it? Yes. You're Laura? Yes. And tell your Uncle Ed I'm here and waiting. Well, he isn't here. He got here sometime yesterday. Asked me to come here today. But I'm here. I, um, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but, um, he, he's away. He's abroad. He is not here. Oh. Hmm. Owes me some money. Oh, he, he does. Yes, five thousand. Uh, I see. I don't care whether I see him or not. All I care about is the money. But, uh, I... I wait for him. Uh, well, you, 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 you can't... told me he was coming here yesterday. He hasn't come. All right, can't wait. Oh, well, it, it might be very awkward. Um, um, suppose... Yes? Suppose I gave you the money. That would be all right. Then you would go away? You wouldn't wait for Uncle Edward? I'd go away? All right, I, I think I, I may have it here. I, I always keep a, a, quite a bit of cash around. The expenses, you know, I... Yes, yes, I do have it. And uh, here you are, Mr. Thrale. Thanks. Well, you didn't count the money. I trust you. Thank you. You know, I like this part of the country. Do you? Yes. And I've just changed my mind. What about? Going away. I'm getting on in years. Maybe I'll spend the rest of them here. You said you'd go away. I did, didn't I? That was before you gave me the money. Well, you 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 can't be very long on that. I there'll be more, won't there, Laura? Hmm. Well, I'd better be running along. Find myself a nice place to live near the village. But Mister, you see, Trail... I know your uncle Edward did come here last night, and uh, he didn't owe me any money. I was trying to get a job from him. Oh, but uh, this way is. Even better. Hmm? Au revoir. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, gents, it's getting late. I'll be gone. My new little gray home in the west, eh? <laughs> that is nice. Oh, man, Thrill will be back, though. Buy all the drinks you can stand. Hey. Let me see you. The duck. What you want? I said, what? Don't you stand there looking at... Hey, that knife. What are you doing with that? No! Well, you're all here waiting, eh? What's the matter, you brave or something? Oh, you are. Then suppose you crawl out from under that sofa and listen to the tale of Laura, who planted her Uncle Edward under the rose bushes in the garden with her favorite paper knife in his back. A Mr. Thrale tried to blackmail her, but one dark night, Mr. Thrale lost interest in worldly matters, lying down in the street with a knife in his heart. The next morning at Green Towers... Mm. Good morning, Laura. Good morning, darling. Got a breakfast already? Mm, too hungry to wait. Pull up a chair and go to work. All right, I will. <gasps> What's the matter, Laura? Nothing. You're a bit pale. I'm all right. I, uh... Tony, who put those roses on the table? I did. They're blooming. I know how you love them. Oh, well, thank you, darling. Say, um... Uh, terrible thing in the papers this morning. Oh? What? A man stabbed to death in the village. Really? Mm-hmm. Stranger hereabouts. He was at the village bar, throwing a lot of money around. Walked out. Somebody evidently wanted the rest of his money, so, uh... He got a knife stuck into him. Oh, how dreadful. What was his name, Tony? It was a funny name. Hard to remember. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, three ill. Oh, that's what it was. Laura, what's wrong? Oh, no, nothing, nothing. I, I, I do think, though, that those others have given me a headache. Their odor's so strong. Oh, that's a shame. Well, I'll get rid of them. Oh, will you? Thank you. I'll, I'll go and lie down for a while. Maybe my head will feel better. Yeah, you do that. Yes, I... I may even be able to sleep again. Laura. Uh, yes, sir. Stop wandering about the room. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm just a bit restless. Get your, uh, paper knife back from the cleaners yet? Paper? Oh, no, no, not yet. It's taking an awful long time, isn't it? Hope they haven't lost it. I hope not. Tell me. What? There are no roses in this room, are there? No. Well, then why is the odor of roses so strong? Laura, I'm worried. Why? Because there is no odor of roses in this room. Good night, Tony, darling. Flora, are you sure you don't want me to stay with you at night? No. Run along to your own bedroom. You're not looking well. I'll be all right. Well, yell if you want me. Good night. Good night, Tony. Good night. I'll be all right, all right, if only the roses will go away. A heavy, sweet odor of roses always in my nostrils. The deadly, decaying odor of roses always in my Nobody in the garden. Nobody at all. There's a plum tree just as it always is. And the vegetable patch. And the lawn where we play croquet. And 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 there are the rose bushes, too. The rose bushes. And out of the rose bushes, a man is standing up and it's my uncle! No! No! What did that doctor say? The, the, the consultant, I mean. Well, I don't know. He's stopping by in a little while. He seemed a very strange man. Oh, psychiatrist, oh, I mean... I knew he was a psychiatrist, darling. Tony, do you think of I'm... Of course not. Because it's only that I smell roses when they're on You're me. not I... crazy, Lauren, for heaven's sake. That must be the doctor now. Now, you'll be a good girl. I'll see him, and I'll be back very soon. You try to sleep? Yes, darling. But I couldn't sleep. The odor of roses was so terribly strong. I thought, well, perhaps if I got out of bed and, and lay down on the floor where the fresh air and the air conditioning machine were strong, perhaps there I'd be more comfortable. But... And for a moment, I thought it was funny as I crawled about a bit on the floor, on my hands and knees, until I found the place where the fresh air was supposed to come from. Then, then I began to laugh. And I laughed, and I laughed. That night, I waited till he slept. And I went downstairs into the cellar. Right to the air conditioning machine which kept the house so fresh. And there, in front of the blower which drove the air through the pipes into my bedroom, I found a little bottle. It was a lovely little bottle with a crest on its little fat belly and the word Atter of Roses on it. The bottle, you see, was open. And then I knew 
that I wasn't mad. And I also knew that the time had come for me to find my paper knife again. I'm awake, Tony. Ah, brought you a breakfast. Thank you, darling. Um, put it down. I won't need it just yet. All right. Hey, you had a good night? I had a wonderful night. Tony, I think I'm going to be well again. Good. Help me out of bed, darling, will you? Sure, all right. Just put your arms on me. All right. There, up. <sighs> oh, don't be in such a hurry to take your arms away, darling. Hold me close. Oh, Lord. Whew. Darling, I forgot to tell you. What? My paper knife came back. You what? Yes, I have it now in my hand. The hand that's behind your back, Tony. Flora. Yes, Tony, here is my paper knife. <coughs> you can take your arms away from me now, Tony. <coughs> it was quick as it, Uncle Edward, but I think you'll die anyway, Tony. Yes. Yeah. Good doctor. Maybe this can. Maybe. Oh, no, no, doctor. Why? I found the bottle Why? of perfume you placed in the air conditioner. That you were using to drive me mad. <coughs> bad. Bad luck. Very bad luck, darling. You saw me kill Uncle Edward, didn't you? You were the one in the garden, weren't you? Yes, yeah, saw you. And then when Flail came, you knew about him and you killed him, didn't you? Of course. Couldn't, couldn't afford to have you give him money. <laughs> money. <coughs> Who's going to, to be mine? Oh, Tony. Oh, Tony, didn't you know it was yours anyway? Everything I had was yours. Why did you have to torture me and try to drive me crazy? You would have cracked it. And the money would have gone to... Yes. Uncle Ed... I played it safe. But you didn't, Tony, did you? Play it safe. Because now you're dying. And when you're dead, I'm going to bury you with Uncle Edward. Right in the garden under the rose bushes. I've already told everyone that you're going away, and you are. But not very far. Although it's far enough, isn't it, Tony? You've won. <laughs> Thank you, darling. And you've lost. Unless... What? know what that is. It's an ambulance. For you. Why? You're mad. Yesterday, two doctors signed certificates <gasps> of lunacy. I authorized. I am not insane. I can prove it. The odor of roses is a fake. I can show them the perfume. I can explain it to them. But how will you explain me or Uncle Edward? I... I... That's it, Laura. How will you explain us? Tony! 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 Wait! Wait! What am I going to do? If I prove I'm sane, they'll hang me. And I don't want to be hanged. But if I say nothing, they'll think I'm insane and they'll send me to the asylum and I don't want to go to the asylum. And they won't go away! They... handy girl with a paper knife, but who didn't do so well with her spring planting. Oh, and while I amble down to Green Towers to find out whether Laura is spending the winter in a padded cell or at the morgue, let me give you a bit of earnest advice. Never plant your uncle in the rose bushes if you're allergic to pollen. You might get a bad case of sleigh fever. <laughs> <laughs> Emma Franklin has been a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. Voice of information and education.